Hi Makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. I love war games as you may have known and if you've watched my videos in the past you'll see that I like everything from Necromunda through to Age of Sigma through to 140k. Anything sort of war gamey and terrainy I really enjoy. I especially like making and printing terrain. And with terrain being a huge part of the new 9th edition of 40k I thought you know what let's make some ruins and some buildings. So I've gone on to Thingiverse and 3D Cults and many other 3D printing websites. I found the best ones I could find. Links in the description below as always. So we're going to print these out, we're going to paint them, we're going to see how we can make these look fantastic on the tabletop. Before we do that however, don't forget to like and subscribe. Really helps the channel, really helps me out. So like, subscribe, it don't cost you nothing. So yeah, war game, scenery and buildings. Uh, long term viewers will know that I do like making scenery and buildings and yeah, 3D printing really helps with that. Question is, do you go for the one off file which basically just has one building and it prints it in one solid lump? Or do you go for the modular one where you can attach floors and, and walls together and make your own designs and make these as big and small as you want. I print out a load, um, I put the links in the description below for all the files and I'll also let you know in the comments below who's made these beautiful files. But let's get on. Okay so let's start out with a fairly simple one. This is a uh, simple build that uh, requires very little support, just a couple of little bits around the edge in there and uh, to support the balcony there, although I'm not totally sure you couldn't print this without sports completely. It's basic, it's just got a little ruined corner, it's got a few cracks which you can tell basically someone's just done a straight um, solid girder and just used the uh, engraving tool and just run it down there to make simple cracks. Uh, the same here, these are obviously just regular parts and someone's just done the engraving tool and cut round it. Still, very nice piece of terrain. A few more details. This one here, this cathedral piece. Yeah, I really like this one. It's got a load more detail on it. There's arches and buttresses and uh, it's almost a cloister there when you go through it. Yes, I know all of the religious building words. Uh, no um, flaws in here, but you can easily use a bit of square cardboard and just tuck them in there. They've even put holes in there as well, so you could probably utilize those and put some struts across and. Make, make some floor levels so you can get some snipers in the windows here. I myself though prefer modular stuff where you can actually print out the blocks and make your own huge structures. Let's have a look at those now. Okay, so yeah. First thing I like is the walls. It's lovely, just regular. You print them out. They've got little lines there just sticking out we can balance floors on. You got floors. I like these. Got a nice little tile effect, and yeah, a bit of uh, bit of ink on there, and a, a bit of contrast paint, and they come up beautifully. And then you have got, say, a sort of a ruined uh, stained glass window, and yeah, sort of just cut straight down where it's been blown to pieces or just fallen apart over the centuries. And yeah, you just attach these together fairly easily. As this is PLA filament, uh, using the usual um, polystyrene cement that burns the plastic ain't going to work on these particularly well. So yeah, a little bit, little bit of super glue here always works nicely. So just uh, go along the edge here with the super glue. Don't use too much. And then just get these two together and attach them like so. And once that's stuck, you can then get the floor piece and just a little bit of glue along the top. And along the side. And there you go, got this nice uh, shape there. And 10 minutes later, lovely buildings like this. I've also used a bit of cardboard on top to make a collapsed gangway and a top in there as well. 
So yeah, combining the two is always nice. You can uh, combine the old school uh, hot glue and cardboard with the new school PLA 3D printing. So yeah, old school and new school work working together beautifully. And yeah, you can make anything you want to. I and mean, I've got this one here with, uh, this one with some nice cardboard on it. And I've made this big lad here with uh, some gothic architrave and some uh, bit of bit of bit of dry brushing on there as well to start things off. And this slightly longer one, where I've combined some Necromunda style uh, neo sort of techno gothic with uh, some other people's work as well. So you've got the uh, recognizable window there and the arch, which I've combined with a bit of sort of techy uh, steampunk there. And yeah, these make some really, really nice uh, looking bits of scenery. So let's go give these an undercoat. We'll give them a dry brush and see how they come up with painting. Right, with an undercoat of black and a bit of grey, we'll just do a light dry brush of silver. Just to bring out the lovely uh, details on this print. Just go over all the edges with a nice, almost, almost bare brush, just a little bit of silver on it. Yeah, over all the indents and all the uh, little rivets and bits and pieces the designer has put on here. And yeah, the designer on here has done a, done a lovely job with this. It's not too detailed, so it causes problems with the print, but it's just detailed enough that if you've got a creative painting, you can uh, really bring out some of the niceness of this uh, 3D print. You know what, I was going to leave it at that, but um, I reckon it might benefit for, for a little bit of a wash as well. So I'm going to basically a bit of Ad Adrax Earth Shade on it as well to uh, really bring out the dirt. So yeah, just wash that over it. And the bits you've just highlighted in silver, as you see, would still show through. You'd think that it would dull them down, but it doesn't. It actually highlights the silver quite nicely. And yeah, don't worry where you're getting this stuff. Just wash it all over the... Uh, all over the detail and just gives it a really nice dirty used look. You could also use null oil if you don't want it to look dirty, you just want it to look aged. Null oil also does it quite nicely and they're both available on the Citadel range. I think Vallejo do a, a nice um, wash selection as well but I haven't really tried theirs but they look good in other people's videos so yeah maybe give them a look as well. I am not sponsored by a Citadel. Although if they are listening, I'd love to be sponsored by Citadel. I can show with the best of them. Have you tried Raid Shadow Legends? I have, it's shit, don't bother. There we are, nice mucky layer of shade paint there. You can also mix this up, you just use a bit uh, a very light, a very sort of very dark brown, just mix it with huge amounts of water, say sort of 10 to 1 mix. You can also just chuck that over the top. It's exactly the same as shade paint. I, uh, I'm just old school and I do like um, using the uh, the stuff I used to use, Del uh, was it Devil in Mud, which was uh, one of the first shades to come out and I used to love that stuff. In fact, I think I still got a pot of it, but it stinks to high heaven by now because that stuff goes off. Yeah, old Citadel washes actually went off back in the day. And yeah, they make really, really terrible smells when you open them. So yeah, if you do buy a second-hand paint set, if you've got Devil in Mud, maybe open it outside before you use it. Right, there we go. Lovely. Nice, uh, 
dirty wash there over some nice shiny silver. So yeah, that's going to look great. Okay, let's have a look at the white ones. So the building's in white. I am going to give it a quick splash of a shade called Seraphine Sepia. Which, I mean, looking white, it looks awful, but uh, cover it with this stuff. It's a really nice colour to it. It's going to get in all the gaps and all the, all the bits and pieces. Try not to leave any of it white so we, uh, the whole thing looks consistent. And move it around so it doesn't pull. You don't want it dripping off and making dark spots and light spots. And finally, just a little bit of dry brush silver over the Seraphine Sepia. You'll notice here there's uh, some honeycombing. Uh, there was an issue with the uh, 3D print, I had to stop it about halfway through, but I like the effect so much I actually used the pieces which didn't print properly, because it just looks like they've, uh, the cement or the, uh, the plasteel, as they, as they call it in some, some games, as it has just broken down, you've got the struts underneath, so yeah, I, I left those in because I like them. Cool, okay, so, let's see what this looks like with a bit of a scene. Yes, I think you have to agree, those things turned out fantastically. And with the terrain being a huge part of a lot of war games, especially with the ninth edition of 40 Head coming out, where uh, terrain is going to be a massive, massive thing. Yeah, the details on this I am very, very happy with. I like the uh, the shinies. And yeah, the, um, the ruined sections look really, really, really good. Um, especially if you print them out in rough. I find if you print terrain out on rough settings on your printer, you actually get some interesting effects. I mean, yeah, mostly you want to get the best, most detailed effects you can on models, but when it comes to terrain, no, having print lines and failed bits and, 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 and bits crumbling off actually looks really, really nice. And I like printing terrain on the lower settings. Also, it's quicker, but basically it doesn't matter so much on terrain because you can just cover it with filler primer, paint, moss, anything else you want to do to add these to uh, make these look even better. Bit of dry brushing, bit of contrast, a bit of, bit, of, bit of shade paint and they come up beautifully. So yeah, links in the description below for all these fantastic makers. Thank you so much to the guys who uploaded these. Thanks so much for watching 3D Printed Soup. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay happy, stay safe and keep printing.